But meanwhile, let's find out how others are coping with the impact of the subsidy removal. Uh, joining us for that conversation is Mr. Austin Enajemo Isira. He's the chairman and uh, founder of DDM. F Bank, that's used to know him more as Davudani Microfinance Bank. He's also the chairman of the board, Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund. He joins us virtually. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, Mr. Isira. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, first of all, let me correct. Uh, I'm, not, I'm the immediate uh, past chairman of uh, Nigeria Social Insurance. All right. Uh, All right, uh, Mr. Isire, thank you for that. So uh, tell us, especially you also a founder of a microfinance bank, and we have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, things going on in the economy now. We talk of inflation. Uh, we have the interest rate, which is supposed to work in your favor as a bank. Um, how are you feeling the impact of all of this, especially the removal of subsidy? Okay, thank you. Uh, once again, uh, the government we have today uh, have come up with some clear objective of how to revamp their economy. Uh, they have also told us uh, that uh, they will expand the economy yearly by 6% uh, uh, growth and create jobs and unify the exchange rate. So with all of this happening, I can confidently say that the president, uh, President uh, Ahmed Tunubu, has uh, started on a good note. He's already taking on the relevant uh, people, discussing with them, and uh, preaching the, 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 the doctrine of teamwork, that this thing has to be done together so that uh, we can re rebound the economics and uh, everything will begin to work well. Remember that he also talked about this issue of uh, unifying the exchange rate. I am sure all of this will help to you know, bring uh, life back into the economy in a way that we'll expect. All right, he, he made the, that announcement about unifying the exchange rate, and we've seen a lot of uh, positive reactions to that, but some people wonder how, you know, he would bring that to pass, because it doesn't look like just a pronouncement would do that. I mean, even yesterday we saw that the Naira dropped, the value of the Naira dropped to a record low uh, because of... Uh, new demands for the USD. So how do you see that really being implemented? Yes, you know, economic issues are indeed looked at and analyzed. Making a pronouncement on itself will aggravate some of the uh, uh, agitation in the mind of people. That agitation will have an uh, immediate, a very short-term effect, it will create some panic in the minds of people and that will impact on what you are seeing today that the Naira is going down. But remember, he's looking at how do we bring back this economy. One of the issues you mentioned about is the issue of subsidy removal. If that is removed, efficiency, the law of demand and supply will come in. And once all of that are coming into play and some of the infrastructure I look at, the refinery, the private sector will be encouraged to call me. And all of this will have a downward pressure on the, the exchange rates and by extension will be a native spot out of some of our commodities. Once we have all of this, then the price, the Naira exchange rate will begin to experience of gains and that will be better for economy. So the president also promised to reduce interest rates. That sounds, you know, kind of difficult at this time uh, because we see uh, inflation keeps surging. And then with what has happened now, the removal of the subsidy, which of course has uh, led to higher pump price 
and higher transportation, higher price for uh, cost of food and all of that, we expect inflation to go even higher. We're expecting, especially for that of June. And the CBN on its part tries to tame inflation by increasing interest rates. So it seems there are, you know, two different sides. How do you see the president uh, reducing interest rates uh, while inflation is still surging? Thank you. Uh, you will recall that when an economy is brought to the part of performing, Usually, all the economic indices will begin to play out positive. And if we begin to see that, then the interest rate regime will go down. But you should understand that this thing does not happen overnight. These are pronouncements that the president has made. And he is very right. It is hard for businesses to be done at a very high interest rate as well as experiencing today. So by the time all of the economic sectors, various sectors of the economy are put on the performing lane, if the interest rate goes down, it will impact on inflation. And uh, today we are talking about 23% uh, thereabout of uh, interest rate, uh, sorry, inflation rate today. But when all the economy activities are on, the production sector are on, the full side of the, the, of, the bank, of the divide is working, and all debt organizations are coming up, uh, you will begin to see a, a brighter light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm positive that with the way the president has started, we're going to witness some tremendous changes. All right, so um, as a microfinance bank, uh, the high interest rates, isn't it good for your business? How has it been affecting your operations as a microfinance bank? Okay, thank you. As uh, MMB, you will recall that uh, the microfinance bank industry was actually created for a sort of specific objectives. And uh, if you take it back to the regulatory framework designed by Central Bank in 2005 as amended today, they are meant to bring a lot of your bank into the banking uh, sector, uh, wavelength, and uh, address those who are also at the bottom of the pyramid. So now, if you look at it from that angle, you discover that the interest rate being high as a single item does not do the whole magic. You are talking of the entire players in that market. The, the, the microfinance bank, the customers who are the consumer of our products, and the economy itself. So a lower interest rate is, will be ideal for those who are borrowing from the microfinance bank. And the higher volume you do, the better for any forward-looking microfinance bank. So it's not all about high interest rates that we, we will say that uh, that is uh, an advantage to MMB. If you maintain a high interest rate and there's no consumer of your product, what happens to you? So all of this thing will be put into a one basket, review together, critically analyze them, and then the whole economy will be better for it. So recently, there, there's been a lot of news around microfinance banks. Uh, one uh, newspaper even said uh, microfinance banks are endangered species at this time. Uh, we heard of the revoking of some licenses of microfinance. What really is going on? I know there was a recapitalization, which some banks couldn't meet up. And uh, of course, uh, those ones will cease to operate. But why so much attention was making the microfinance banks endangered at this time? Oh, thank you for this question. Um, I will tell you that uh, well, individual I title to their opinion. Uh, I find it difficult from my perspective to say MMB are a danger per se because the purpose of why MMB came uh, into the banking industry were meant to fulfill a purpose. And therefore, that purpose has not died. That purpose is still very much alive today. 
So they are meant to satisfy some segment of the economy. So I, uh, I do not really see how they are endangered per se. But I also know that the regulatory, the regulatory authority, the Central Bank of Nigeria, have advanced some reasons why some of these microfinance banks have been cancelled. And uh, you have mentioned one of them, the issue of inability to meet up with the new capital regime introduced, which ended April last year. And uh, I also read about the uh, issue that bothers of uh, public governance, and uh, even some are already of uh, business. So I've read about all of this, and I think the authority and appropriate time will straighten out these clear reasons and then let the public be aware of the real, all of these reasons so that confidence can be built into the market. A trust and integrity is the watchword for a, a banking institution. And Microfinance Bank today, I'll tell you, they are playing a very pivotal role in driving the financial you know, institution, in driving the economy we have today. And that you cannot take away. All right, thank you so much. We we'll certainly feel, uh, uh, would like to feel more impacts of the microfinance bank. We talk about financial inclusion and um, serving, you know, those at the bottom of the ladder. Thank you so much for your time, uh, founder and chairman of Davodani DDMF Bank. Davodani, we know you must. Davodani Microfinance Bank and former chairman of the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund, Mr. Austin Inajemo Isire. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you very much.